Hello, my name is Mikkel Thorpe. I am the host of the Expat Money Show. And today I am joined by my very good friend, Sven Lawrence. Sven lives in a really, really interesting country. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. So Sven, thank you very much for coming. I am really excited to learn from you today. Say hello to everyone. Hi, everyone. It's great to be back. <laughs> okay, so Sven, where do you live? I live on a small island off the coast of France. It's in the English Channel. Okay. It's called Sark. And it's relevant and interesting for your audience mm -hmm. because it is the smallest independent state in the British Commonwealth. It's an island with just 550 residents, but for all intents and purposes, it is de facto a country. It's a so-called crown dependency. So legally speaking, that is slightly different from being your own country. Mm -hmm. But for all intents and purposes, such as having a parliament, having its own laws, having its having a head of state, having its own tax system, it's it, it ticks most boxes of what would be a country. And it's also uh, probably one of the most libertarian places in the world. Yeah, you kind of spoiled the surprise. But yeah, I think once you guys hear Sven describe this country, you're going to go, wow, that is a very libertarian country. So why, okay, let's start with the basics. You mentioned kind of where it is and the population, but what are the rules or the laws surrounding SARC that would make it very libertarian? The number one example that I always tell everyone is that, so a lot of entrepreneurs will be listening to your YouTube video and your podcast, and entrepreneurs have to deal with employees usually. Mm -hmm. And in just about every country, they will be struggling with employment laws and with a lot of countries being quite biased towards protecting employees, probably a little bit more than the entrepreneur would like that sure. country to okay. do. Sark has taken a slightly different approach. We have no employment law. Okay. It is just simply a matter of two consenting adults come to an agreement about work and compensation for work being exchanged. And it's up to the two human beings to work that out between themselves. And there are no laws governing that. Okay, interesting. How about from a tax standpoint? Sark has a culture of the residents being very much responsible for themselves, for better or worse. And this is just a culture that's been there for, for centuries. This is okay. not a, a recent um, decision. And as part of that culture, the island has what I always describe as a one-page tax return. The truth is, it's two pages. There's some stuff on the back, but you don't need to fill anything out. Mm -hmm. uh, Instructions or, yeah. Uh, yeah, where to send the money, basically. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which you can also pay in cash if you want to. Uh, the tax system is based roughly, I'm putting this in slightly simplified terms, it's based roughly on the size of the property you live in. Whether you rent it or own it doesn't matter. Okay. If you have a bigger property, you pay more taxes. If you have a smaller property, you pay less taxes. And importantly, if you don't want to, you don't have to dis disclose your income. You don't have to disclose your assets. So it's just literally how big is my property? There's a formula. Okay. After 30 seconds, you're done. You pay so generally. So property taxes. It's essentially property tax, yeah. Okay, but what about income tax, corporate tax, inheritance tax, uh, wealth tax, tax the rich? What about all of these types of things? Why would anyone need this? <laughs> we don't have any of these things. <laughs> I have no idea, but we do. But they're everywhere and it's rampant everywhere. So what you're saying in Sark, this doesn't exist or it doesn't apply to the residents who live there? It, it doesn't exist. Okay. We, we just... The island, and I mean, this predates me, obviously. So when I say we, it's not like I set up any of this. No, Sark, King's fan. <laughs> we have a head of state. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sark has never seen a need for this. Okay. And has always taken the approach that we are a small community where people are living essentially in harmony. I mean, small islands also make for interesting social situations at times. But essentially, this is a crime-free island where just about everyone contributes to the government on a, on a voluntary basis. Okay. The government is run by volunteers. Some wow. people get paid something for certain work that they do. Like we have an island doctor, they get a salary. But on the whole, it is a, a volunteer culture and society. Mm -hmm. And the position simply is to say, you know, we spend as little money as possible. And for matters like healthcare, pension, et cetera, et cetera, the individual is responsible. Wild and, idea, I know. People you know, being responsible is, for their own lives, my goodness. Yeah, this is how it used to be. So I always describe it as it is 
you live a life how an English gentleman or an English person would have lived their life in the 19th century. You had a government, you have civilization, you have a policeman, we have a constable, we have a judge, we have a court, mm -hmm. we have laws, um, we have, you know, certain government facilities. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you have very limited contact or exposure or intrusion by your government. And this is how people there like it, mm -hmm. which is why this is not even a, a subject of, you know, political debate or anything like that. that, that it's the way it's always been. And mm -hmm. why change a winning system? So what about the economy? If there's not massive amount of tax the rich, 40%, 70%, you know, these types of crazy numbers that they're throwing out, how is the economy there? Is the country in massive amounts of debt? No. So first of all, the government having debt is illegal in Sark. Okay. So that <laughs> that just doesn't fly. Yeah. Uh, Sark has a cash reserve. It's not as big as I would love it to be. And and in, one has to say the island also has financial challenges ahead in terms of infrastructure and things. So it's not completely betted on roses, but crucially, it doesn't have debt and it has some cash. So, you know, this is a great starting position to be in. And the economy is, I mean, there's traditionally uh, a lot of tourism. Every summer from May to September, you've got about 60,000 tourists in a normal year coming there. Wow. Um, 60,000 tourists for a country or a, a, an island with 500 residents. Yeah. On a good summer day, you can double or triple the island population. There are Amazing. festivals, there's stuff going on. Uh, so this gets a lot of money into the economy. They also pay an alcohol tax. We do have a, a tax on alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, that is a, um, and uh, there's some uh, some agriculture, some fisheries. There's that the very traditional and conventional part of the economy. Increasingly, there are people who are quite digitally savvy who are running online businesses. Um, there are people who are independently wealthy who manage their wealth from SARC. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a quite a mixture. And the tourists are coming in from France, from the UK, where where are a lot of the people coming yes, in from? Yes, so predominantly from the UK. Okay. During summer, there is a ferry, a regular ferry also to um, to France. There's Normandy, and that's obviously a, an area with, with millions of tourists every year. Mm -hmm. um, but predominantly, it's, it's the island and its neighboring islands. It's part of the Channel Islands, which is four islands. They're very much orientated towards the UK. Okay, and then uh, logistically, if someone wanted to visit, they fly into London and come down, they go to, they take a ferry. How does this work um, from the logistics side? To Correct. Visit? So in essence, you have to come via London. Yep. There, there are other ways to do it, but this is what it essentially boils down to. And one caveat, and I think it's actually a selling point of Sark, is that we do not have an airport on the island. Mm -hmm. There's a neighboring island called Guernsey, which more people are familiar with because it's a major financial hub. Correct. It's got 62,000 people. It's um, It has a, an airport that pre-pandemic had five flights or six flights a day to London. Okay. Uh, right now, it's with the pandemic that has all changed a bit, but we have multiple flights a day, um, including flights, one flight a day to London City, mm -hmm. the financial district of London. Uh, and then you basically fly from London to, to Guernsey, you hop into a taxi, you, you go to the harbor and you take the Sark Ferry, which runs multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. If it's not winter, in the depth of winter, it runs fewer. Mm -hmm. um, or you have a private charter boat, maybe. You can do that, then you're completely Beautiful. flexible and mm -hmm. that's reasonably affordable. Helicopter? Can we take a helicopter back? For not it? allowed, no. No, no. no. It's Sark. Sark has no... I want to buy a helicopter. That's going to be my... Next toy. I was in a helicopter in Colombia recently and I just fell in love. I thought this is the coolest thing ever. I I think there is a, a hot button political issue with regards to noise. So Sark also uh, doesn't okay. have cars. Sark has tractors. Okay. <laughs> and they're a noise issue as well. So, you know, um, there are issues and challenges. Um, but Sark doesn't have paved roads. It doesn't have street lights. Okay. Uh, again, it's all down to the individual. You have to take your torch at night or you, yeah. you know, charge up your smartphone <laughs> to have a, a torch in your smartphone. Sure. Um, and as part of that, we just simply have no cars. They were banned and everyone goes on bicycle or walks. You can also have a horse or a horse-drawn carriage. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of transport, we are a very conservative Place. Well, this is really funny because as a libertarian, the first pushback that every leftist will ever give you is, well, what about the roads? Sark has this figured out. We don't have any. <laughs> there you go. So now no, no leftist can come after us for saying, uh, you know, 
independent government or low, uh, small government and not high amounts of taxation. So, all right, my next question is more from the personal side. Okay, you are born and raised in Germany. Now you relocated to Sark. I guess it's a two-pronged question. First of all, how long have you spent there or how much of your life have you spent in Sark? And the second part is, what was the reception like when you moved there as a foreigner coming to live in Sark? Yes, so I first got there in 2004 mm -hmm. and got a cottage at the time. Wasn't a full-time resident. It was a matter of coming and going. And okay. in between, I also spent time elsewhere. I lived in South America for four years. So I've not been there since 2004. But in 2017, I made a decision that I'm shifting everything to Sark. Okay. So I knew the place very well already. I knew what I was getting myself into. And I decided that I expected a period of turmoil, turmoil in the world. Mm -hmm. Little did I know, <laughs> <laughs> but turned out rather well, I have to say, having basically established myself there way ahead of, you know, many others trying to do the same. And um, I have been spending uh, since 2017, I've been there every month. Mm -hmm. I, I do travel, I come and go. And since the start of the pandemic, I've been there most of the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, including very extensive periods because mm -hmm. during the pandemic we were one of the few places on earth to not have any restrictions for most of the time. We didn't have masks, we didn't have social distancing, everything was open. We closed the border around us and one can be, you know, have different views about zero COVID policies. But anyway, it was a good place to be. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time there. And in terms of the reception, I think there are two things to say. I mean, first of all, I have always found that no matter what country on earth I went to, if you, you know, if you are a friendly, curious, respectful person, yeah, goes I, a long way. I have not had problems anywhere, really. And the other thing is that on Sark, so we don't have many government statistics because we have literally, you know, no government apparatus in the conventional sense. We don't even know how many people live there. Okay. Which is why when I say that the majority of people who live there right now were not born on Sark, mm -hmm. that is a commonly held view on Sark, but no one can back it up with statistics. Mm -hmm. But basically most people on Sark will probably be from somewhere else themselves. Mm -hmm. So they've moved there for a better life, for more freedom, for opportunity. Correct. So you coming in maybe at a different date doesn't really make you an outsider. It just makes sense. No, no. And um, you know how the Brits are particularly good at having family connections to all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So we've always had people there from uh, Australia, Ireland. Uh, the, the grandmother of the current head of state, uh, she was head of state as well. It's a hereditary position. Okay. She married an American. Okay. And one of the um, most visible restaurants on the island is named after him. So, you know, it's, it, uh, it's probably a much more varied, mixed place than you imagine it to be. Okay. So, um, provided you, you know, you come in and you are eager and willing to listen and to, you know, first learn how everything works and you're a respectful individual, mm -hmm. which is what you should do in every country that you move to. Mm -hmm. um, I can't see why anyone should have any problems. And then you go to the pub and you go drinking with everyone. And the nice thing is with 550 people, you, you get to know people pretty quickly and yeah. you meet each other in the street. Everyone says hello to each other. It's a, it's a very friendly place. Okay, amazing. Now, earlier in our conversation, you mentioned the entrepreneurship. So do you have a lot of entrepreneurs there? Do you have people who have online businesses? Do you have fast Wi-Fi on the island? Yes, let's start with the most important thing. Our Wi-Fi, our internet is really fast. Okay. And it's faster than in most European cities. Amazing. And that's thanks to basically the neighboring island being a financial hub. They've invested heavily into their connectivity mm -hmm. and we, mm -hmm. we ride on the back of that. Okay. So we're all good on that front. Um, online entrepreneurs, they exist. They've only recently started to move there in, in larger numbers. Mm -hmm. It's still a somewhat new phenomena. Mm -hmm. I think it is one of the world's best jurisdictions to run online businesses because you have no obligation to keep accounts, which, you know, cuts down admin. You, you do the accounts and the admin that you want to do for yourself rather mm -hmm. than for someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the fast Wi-Fi. I think it's extremely conducive to being very productive mm -hmm. because you, know, you only have so many distractions on that island. Of course, you know, we've got the school there. There is uh, you know, outdoorsy stuff, kayaking, horse riding, fishing, mm -hmm. swimming, 
diving, you, you name it. But outside of that, I think it is fair to say but that since it's not a big city where you're you know, invited to the cinema, the opera, et cetera, et cetera, every other day, mm -hmm, as you mm -hmm. are in a, in a big city, if you've been able to live that sort of lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, you become very productive. And I have a, you know, one couple who are close friends with mine. They moved there from London. They were in their late 30s when they moved to, to Saar. And their online business has just really taken off since then because they have so much time to focus on their business mm -hmm. besides enjoying their time on the island. So, you know, I, if this is your thing, this kind of place, it's ideal. Well, I would consider myself a pretty prolific content creator. And I look at the amount of writing that you do, and I'm really in awe of all of your projects and the things that you have going on. So that really says a lot. And, you know, in our conversation at dinner last night, you were mentioning like, there's not a lot of distractions. When you sit down to work, you really get a lot done. So you have 24 hours in the day, same as all of us, but you're not torn in a million different directions. Absolutely. And I, as you know, never call it work. I just pursue my interests. And most good entrepreneurs that I know just simply do something they're very passionate about. And if you're in, a, in an environment where your surroundings enable you being productive and focusing on what you love doing, you know, success is just a... Uh, it just follows. Yeah, it's automatic. Okay, what about the climate? What is it like on a, a summer day, a winter day? What is the climate like year round? So everyone always asks about, does it rain a lot? Okay. Which is not the right question to ask. Uh, the number one thing to ask about is wind mm -hmm. and where on the island you live because there are windier locations and there are west, less windy locations. Um, besides that, so if you've been to Normandy or Brittany in France, mm -hmm. you will know the climate there. It is so the, the Channel Islands, which Sark is part of, are much more to the south of London. Mm -hmm. So there's more hours of sunlight. Okay. However, it is located in the sea and the channel has very strong currents and a very big tidal difference. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of a, a wind and there's a uh, an ocean, what's the word, what's the word, an, an oceanic climate in the sense that uh, because of the surrounding sea, it never really gets cold. It mm -hmm. doesn't snow on Sark, you know, like once every 10 years, basically, or mm -hmm. every five years. And in summer, it stays a bit cooler. Say so if it's 30 degrees in London, what would that be in Fahrenheit? Like I have no 80, idea. 85, 90. Yeah. Then it's like somewhat more pleasant on Sark. Okay. Um, so it's, we, we don't do extremes. That, that's the message. We have a very moderate kind of climate. Okay. Well, it sounds nice. So kind of like springtime all the time type of climate. It is. And uh, at the same time, I have to say, we're not the Côte d'Azur. If someone wants to live in the south of France and constantly bake in the sun. Yeah. And our surrounding seas are not as warm as, as the Mediterranean because it's the Atlantic and the water, you know, the tide, it comes in and out twice mm -hmm. a day. Um, people do go swimming. If you don't live there, you would probably want to wear a, a half-length wetsuit to go swimming. Yeah. If you live there, it's normal for you and people think nothing about jumping into the sea. Okay, interesting, interesting. What about light pollution? I did some research on Sark uh -huh. and um, for stargazing, correct me if I'm wrong, it's supposed to be an excellent place. It is. It became the world's first dark sky island because we don't have street lights and because our population density is quite low, there's not much light pollution and stargazing from Sark is extraordinary. And I have to say, this is something that I had never previously tried in life. There are, there's, there's probably more facilities on Sark than you'd imagine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of them is a star observatory of a, I would describe it as a semi-professional setup from what I understand. It's certainly bigger than what you would keep at home normally. And I went there with guidance of one of the local gentlemen who were basically operating this. And I've had some, I, I've seen some things that I didn't know existed and that absolutely captured my imagination. And if I had a bit more time, I would certainly get into that now as well, but great place for doing that. And just walking home through our, you know, on our dark dirt roads that we have <laughs> and seeing the, 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 the sky, uh, is, is an extraordinary, beautiful site, and you don't get that in many places. Sounds very beautiful. Okay, what about infrastructure? You hinted a little bit earlier about, okay, there is a school there, you have a sheriff, you have a... Uh, yeah, these types of things. What about larger facilities like a hospital? What if someone really hurts themselves? What about any other type of larger things that 
um, you would need to to go through or to do to live your life because life is very unexpected. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, these needs of, of of life and of you know safety all exist and are probably better than most people think. Okay. So, for example, even though we're just five hundred and fifty people, we have an island doctor. So last year, some someone, a tourist, had a heart attack on Sark, and the doctor was there in three minutes. You know, wow. where do you get this? Yeah. That said, like in all small communities and on, on all small islands, there can't be a hospital. Luckily, as ever, there's Guernsey next door. Yeah. Guernsey has 62,000 people and Guernsey is a very wealthy place because of the success of its finance industry. Mm-hmm. And the average income on Guernsey is 40% higher than in the UK, mm-hmm. which means public facilities are of a very high standard because mm-hmm. there's just enough money there. That being said, again, if you have some extremely specialized matter that needs to be taken care of, you need to fly to the UK mainland. There are insurance packages that take care of all of these things. You need to figure this out yourself or speak to someone who knows a bit about it, which basically on SARC is just about everyone because mm-hmm. we all had to deal with these subjects. Um, but yeah, we don't have absolutely everything on the island, but generally we're probably better off than people think because for example, our school is much better than what you'd expect on such a small island in terms of the, the physical facility. And I don't have children, but people who do have children and who have sent their kids there tell me it is an amazing school to send your child to because the quality of teaching is very high and the overall experience for a child on a traffic-free, crime-free, unspoiled island with wildlife, space, stuff they can do, other fresh children air. just running around, yeah. fresh air. You know, that's that that makes up for a lot of things. And we may not have the largest supermarket. You know, that's the other thing well, to I ask. I was going to <laughs> ask that one. But okay, actually, before, I do want to talk about that one. But what about the commute? Say that something were to happen and you had to go to one of the I- other islands like Guernsey. What's the commute to go back and forth? It's 33 minutes with a ferry. Okay. Um, I think the question to ask is not so much the time because basically a 30 to 40 minute um, drive on a on a ferry is not that that bad and if you want to do it on a private charter boat you can do it in 15 to 20 minutes if there you know like if there's mm-hmm. a need for speed um, there is definitely an issue of in winter and sometimes during summer the sea can be rough okay if so you docking, are mooring and yeah so if, if you have your own boat you need to know what you're doing and if you easily get seasick mm. you have to consider whether you want to expose yourself there to this there's no way around this so have some matter. gravel with you and uh... <laughs> uh some people are better at dealing it with it yeah. than others some people pop pills others get used to it others never get used to it and in which case you just have to say don't move to an island with with that sort of you know okay. thing okay supermarkets food you guys do you grow any food on the island first of all second of all are there stores on the island and third what about you know more specialized things i'm gonna guess that on the island on neighboring islands i should say but maybe you can break down these two three categories yeah so we have two competing food stores there's one that you could call a supermarket it's a small one and then one that is a more specialized store um they have much more than you would expect and crucially they are happy to order almost anything for you uh, which is then brought on with the regular deliveries that they get. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Guernsey, there is an amazing Waitrose mega store, which is, wow. you know, basically because they are so well off on Guernsey, yeah. um, it's shopping there is for food is, is certainly mm-hmm. taken care of sufficiently. And we have very good logistics in terms of anything that you buy. So anything you bring to the island as a resident, you never need to carry anything. Okay. Because anything you put on the boat, you put your name tag on it. And, and then, they deliver it? And they deliver absolutely everything. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, and I'm not even telling you for, for how little. So what about Amazon? Do you guys have Amazon? Yeah, we have basically, we have a postal system. <laughs> the couriers can deliver as well. Amazing. So anything you order on the web gets to start, like, it's not even an issue. I, I was sometimes a bit flabbergasted when people ask me about Amazon, where I said, do you think we don't have post? By now, I've learned that actually a lot of countries don't have post. <laughs> um, so we're in Panama right now, and I would never trust anything to the postal service. I use Freight Forwarder that delivers this private company, completely private, mm-hmm. and I have options here in Panama, but um, yeah, not a normal post yeah. service. By now, our our logistics are extraordinarily good. The the most remarkable thing I've ever shipped was I bought an 
absolutely outrageously oversized dining table in London, an antique one, mm -hmm. 15 feet. Um, 15 feet, you could fit all of Sark around that. <laughs> it's, it's for 12 people basically, and okay. the chairs, etc., etc. And I literally only had to purchase that in London and make a call. And then the next thing was it turned up in my in my dining room. I hope you tipped the guys you had yeah. to <laughs> bring that uh, up from the ferry. And you know, you can get anything to start easily. That, that's, that, that's a complete non-event. It's not okay. hardly worth speaking about. Okay. Now, what about um, growing food? Are there opportunities to have a garden or anything like that? Yeah. So because the weather is so mild, the climate is so mild, and because it rains in sufficient quantity, uh, things grow very well. There has not been enough of a culture to grow local produce and sell it. People sure. did it themselves, but because the market was so small. what about from so a small, hobby side? Or from a hobby side, completely feasible. I am just now finishing a greenhouse oh, and nice. I'm going to grow some stuff as well. I just want to be prepared for all eventualities. Uh, and I think there is now a growing amount of food being offered locally again. Mm -hmm. uh, there's dairy, there's milk, uh, sheep, lamb. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the food comes to Guernsey from mainland UK, UK yeah. and then brought onto the island on a regular shipment and Correct, yes. put in the stores. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, what about real estate? Uh, are there houses available? Are there hotels if someone wants to visit or Airbnbs if someone wants to visit? What is the housing situation like on the island? Yes, so there are 430 properties on the island. Okay. Some people say it's it's just over 300. It depends on how you count. You know, is that shed over there? Is that a house or is it a shed? Mm -hmm. um, but we're speaking about a few hundred properties. So naturally, it's limited. Mm -hmm. uh, there's fluctuation. There's always something available. People always ask me, can I ever get anything, rental or purchase? Yes, you can. There's always at any given time something available. Is it priced like Monaco? No, not at all. It's like uh -huh. less than 10% of Monaco. I mm -hmm. always say it's like London zone three, you know, like the suburbs of London, basically. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, you, whenever you move to a small jurisdiction, there's the question to ask, for the sake of being able to move there, will I accept something that may not be my dream property that I want to live in for the rest of my life, but base myself there and then be a local who hears about upcoming properties and mm -hmm, then move mm -hmm. up? That's the way to do it, really. Uh, now more than ever, because there is demand and the pandemic has helped suck a lot in terms of people want to get there because it's an attractive environment to live in. There's no government debt. There's no political conflict of the kind that you have it elsewhere. I mean, we have our political discussions as well, but you know, it's not like elsewhere. Sure. <laughs> um, I recommend people to visit as a tourist first. We have hotels. We have very nice hotels. Mm -hmm. We have bed and breakfasts. We have Airbnbs. The season is from May to September. It's lovely throughout the entire summer to visit. You can look up the festivals that exist on Sark if you go to um, the tourism website of Sark, you learn more about what is the you know best period to come if you're into music or you know all sorts mm -hmm, of other mm -hmm. things. And um, yeah, then you know form yourself form an opinion whether this might be your cup mm -hmm. of tea, mm -hmm. no pun intended. Yeah. And since we drink a lot of tea on Sark, <laughs> well, that's interesting as well that there are social events there too. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a a larger type of community and and things to do where people actually get together. Yes, there's a theater group, there's a history group, there's a scientific research center on the island, which again has different subgroups of people who are into birds, plants, the history of the island. And the nice thing is, and that's something that I, I, I really want to emphasize, is it's a space where you can also just simply create what you want. And Sark has had issues in the past with a declining and aging population. So for example, there's right now no music related group so there are music festivals, but there's no, you know, regular thing on the island relating to music. Set it up yourself. You can mm -hmm. do these things mm -hmm. in a small community. Everyone will immediately know that it's happening. Mm -hmm. You will immediately become well known and liked for showing initiative. And, you know, it's up to you to create the lifestyle that you want. And this is a, a unique place that will work for some. It's mm -hmm. a niche, but it you know, we don't want that many people, you know, there's limited space. Mm -hmm. It will only ever be for a select few, but for them, it will probably be the best thing that they've ever come across. So immigration, is it possible to immigrate there? What is the residencies or citizenship? You know, 
speak to me on this side of things. If someone's listening to this and they're going, wow, this is amazing. Um, are there possibilities for them? Absolutely. It is absolutely possible to get in. That includes Americans, uh, Canadians, Canadians, yep. <laughs> uh, people from the European Union, people from Asia. Um, uh, there are multiple routes to get into SARC. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some what I would describe as evolving developments, all of which I have under observation. And you can imagine that, you know, the political process is something that I'm reasonably well plugged into. Sure. Um, things depend on individual circumstances. I have compared it to a whole number of countries, you know, also following your, um, your publications. I, I know a fair bit about other jurisdictions that are offering immigration options. I would say SARC is absolutely feasible. Mm -hmm. It is not the world's easiest place to get in and it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, if you are interested to learn more about this, then definitely, you know, look at, um, yeah, I mean, speak to me and um, I can certainly help in all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll have a link underneath this video where you'll be able to get a hold of Sven. It's expatmoneyshow.com forward slash undervalued. And you can put in your name and email address there and hopefully you'll be able to answer some questions. So my final question for you is what type of person or what kind of person would be right for Sark or, or would enjoy this type of lifestyle um, moving to a country like this? So. I have a history of bringing a fair number of people to SARC and I've had extraordinarily big interest from families. Okay. People who want to live a lifestyle and bring up a family in an environment that is more like how things used to be. Mm. You know, we all know what that means yeah. in a good, in, in, in all sorts of ways. And SARC is, is, is an environment very similar to what I grew up in. And families have taken a real liking to that. And with the good school that I mentioned, um, it's a perfectly viable place for that. And families can thrive there and find other families, you know, to you know, have the kids play with each other, et cetera, et cetera. Then I would say something that has also worked well is um, online entrepreneurs. Yep. It's the ideal place where to base yourself mm -hmm. um, and not be forgotten. I would also say, um, people who live a very international lifestyle, who want to have a base, who want to have a home where they spend significant amounts of time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a place where you just register and you can't it's show up. It's not a paper residence. Exactly. Yeah, you I have understand. to be there. You have to be part of the community. You have to support the local economy, etc., etc. But nothing stops you from traveling a lot. And living on a small island doesn't mean that you're there all the time. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you know, I always say it's good when people go abroad for extended periods because they come back with fresh ideas and fresh energy. Amazing. And um, it's a great place to do that. And these, these are all some examples of people who could. What about retirees? If someone wants to, you know, make a change, they've, they've recently retired or they're planning to retire in the next couple of years. Do you think that that is a good option for them as well? Yes. I've had some of some people like that come to Sark as well, mm -hmm. uh, including some younger temporary retirees who are just saying we, we're taking some time out, which could be multiple years. Nice. Um, and which could also involve, for example, sitting out this current period of instability that we see in the world mm -hmm. uh, from a relatively safe place. So multiple options, really. And anything goes if this is your kind of place mm -hmm. that you're looking for. OK, um, a kind of follow up question for this, and this might be a little bit difficult, but um, moral wise or mental wise, what type of people fit in very well? Um, I would imagine people who like independence, who are self-responsible, uh, responsible for themselves, uh, who are interested in community and maybe community, but helping your neighbor, not necessarily having everything kind of top down. Is that true, first of all? And, and what would you have to add if it is true? I think you've just answered your, your, your own question. I'm I good would, at that, yeah. <laughs> and I, I would add to it that there's very much a live and let live yes. um, approach. You know, as I always say, don't behave like a dick. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, <laughs> and be respectful and then others will treat you with respect and will let you do your thing within right. the boundaries of the law, of course. Yeah. Um, 
and isn't that a great way to live and isn't that how you know it used to be in way more parts of the world and sadly it's been lost and Sark is this time capsule almost mm -hmm. where this old style way of living has been preserved and we're very happy that that's the case. Amazing. Well, at the beginning of the video, we mentioned that it is a very libertarian place. And I think after all of these examples, you can see why we would say that. So Sven, thank you so much for coming on and describing your home and, and where you live. And I think it's really exciting. If you guys want to get a hold of Sven, if you want to answer, ask some questions and get some answers to, you know, flush out a little bit more of these details, then you can sign up for his weekly dispatch. It's at expatmoneyshow.com forward slash undervalued. And sign up for that and get on the newsletter and then shoot, send some questions. And I'm sure you'd be happy to help out my listeners. Yeah. And visit. And visit and Both visit. I'm going to be visiting. I'm going to be bringing the entire family hopefully next year. So we'll do lots of content uh, from the Excellent. island next time. Great. Looking forward to that. Nice one. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.